Welcome at the new vlog for co-pilots of the cross-country Bajas and rallies. We will use this um, vlog to show you some of our action, our work, um, how our devices are working, our problems inside the car, our discussions with the driver and technical issues with the cars. Whatever is happening, um, you will find in this video vlog. Now we are at the Dubai International Baja 2021. First race after Dakar in this year for us in the desert. So um, it's a it's a, like a small showdown um, of what's coming next. The interesting thing for me is that I'm in a new team um, with a new driver, with a new car, so a new challenge. Um, by the way, my name is Dirk von Sitzewitz, and I will present some more stuff during the days. Hello, my name is Khard Al-Kindi. I'm co-driver with Yahya Al-Hilli in Dubai Baja. Uh, today we are in the scrutineering uh, day, so uh, normally it's, we are done. My driver, it's, yes, it's, he's old, but he's fast and fit. Uh, now we, are our, we know there's three drivers, it's really fast. Yazid, Al-Qasimi, and Yasser Sayedan. Oh, this is a uh, fifth. First time to drive with Laia in the in the cars and also is uh, side by side. It's a different experience. It's a different car type of car is uh, usually to drive in the in the Dakar on the right. Uh, we will see what happens in the this stage. It's uh, a lot of sun, a lot of dunes. Uh, Laia have a good feeling in the dunes. It's safety and now you need to do some kilometers to to take uh, the feeling in the car and also the, the feeling in the race. But uh, I'm so happy to, to drive, to stay here and to, to stay with Laia in the, in the car. Navigation. Navigation in uh, Baja, Dubai, it's, to be honest, it's not difficult that much. But you have to be careful about uh, the surprise places. There are some uh, places it's really surprising, so you have to be focusing all the time. Uh, but uh, the difficulty thing, it's uh, the speed, really high speed here, I think. Uh, like the past years, yes, was the speed. I don't know about this year, but normally it's look like same before because in the same area. Uh, okay, from my side, navigation not too difficult. Um, Leader of the race, huh? so far. Good job. Uh, yeah, okay, well, a lot of the waypoints are open, but also a lot, they close the waypoints, so uh, you not need to focus some places on the cap and make sure you do it well, but for us, we have no mistakes, and uh, the feeling, not that we push a lot, but the stage is difficult, very physical for the body, a lot of big ditch and slow, sharp dunes, and it felt quite a long stage, but okay, you see some mark from the bike, but a lot of places we go a different, a different area from the bike, and and also, I think for the bike, the waypoint all open. So if you see the track from the bike, you know he, he's following the waypoint. So uh, this can give you good confirmation that you're in the good way. And I have to admit the navigation is completely different than in Dhaka. Dhaka is mainly based on the roadbook and you have to follow the, the pictures, instructions, the roadbook. And here in the roadbook, you have got many waypoints. Especially this E V point means it's eclipse. It's an open waypoint. So all the way you've got an, an open arrow that shows you this, the distance and the direction to that point. And sometimes you have got mask waypoints, but not so many. Most of them are E eclipse, and that makes navigation a lot easier. Of course, here eclipse mask E. So um, it's a complete different navigation. You here in this race, you look mainly on the GPS and try to keep the driver on the, on the right line. And in Dakar, you mainly looking into the roadbook, into the pictures, and then you you check the, the cup direction. You hope that you're choosing the ro the right way, but you only that confirm get confirmation like a couple of kilometers later at the next picture of the roadbook. And here you have got always the GPS on, that makes it a lot easier. Still, it's not easy, but a lot easier than in Dakar. Well, I think here it's. <laughs> When you are used to rally the car, here it's quite easy because mostly ever you have the arrow of the waypoints. So it's been nice. I think it's it's maybe a good way to start for, for the people who wants to start in rally or cross country. I think it's a good way to start and start to learn how RTF works and all this stuff. 
Uh, in previous years, navigation here was very simple because it was all the time open arrow. But now it was sometimes, uh, yeah, it was like hidden waypoint. So uh, it's not so easy if somebody will came here for first rally. It's not so easy, but I have a big training after Dakar, so for me it was no problem. They give me roadbook just uh, 15 minutes before before start. It's enough because here is nothing complicated. Uh, all the time you know it will be sand or uh, or dunes, so. Nothing special. On the Dakar is very big problem because you have, you know, not enough time to, to check everything. But here the roadbook was precise. I don't have a problem with GPS today, so I am happy. It's uh, it's not so difficult here to the to the navigation. It's a lot of wet points, and only to need to check if all the wet points is validated. But uh, it's it's a good experience because it's. A lot of kilometers with uh, with dunes. It's a uh, small dunes, but very anarchic <coughs> dunes in the middle, and some holes. It's easy to stack the the car in the middle, and after we lose a lot of time, is you need to remove the car. For safety reasons, we have got in the cars and on the bikes a tracking system. In Dakar and some other races, we're using the system Erie Track, and in this race here in the Bahas, we're using Sports Tracks. The difference for us inside the car is, is not really there because we cannot follow the tracking while we are racing. Um, for us it's a safety device. Uh, the positive thing on the Erie track is that we could talk to the race organizer at any time or he could talk to us because the telephone included in that system. It's not like that in the sports track. It's more interesting for you, for the fans and for everybody who is sitting at home and following the race. And with the Erie track you can follow really the racing what's happening you see the split times the way at the waypoints who's improving who's losing time how the positions are and in sport tracks we have got a very nice map but you get no timing out of it so you don't see who's leading who's second who's gaining and who's losing so it would be great to have a mixture of both a nice map you know with with split times maybe eerie track and sports tracks they have to work together to get the proper tracking device for us that for you at home it's more action and more fun to follow our races for the covid situation is difficult for us because it's it's difficult to plan something we have a plan to do more races but sometimes one week before you would like to go you, you know about this forbidden the country is closed so it's very difficult and uh, i don't know what to say more but we try to we try to don't think about that too much and uh, when it's possible when it's possible we are going but it's always risky about 50 percent it will be race or it, it will be no race and also you have to make a doing during this rally, I think I did three time test COVID, so this is also strange, but I have to do test uh, almost every day. I don't know what happened with the, with the future in, the, in this uh, type of races. Now the Portugal, the race is cancelled and I don't know, Silgoy maybe is cancelled uh, also and uh, we need to to improve and to work hard to to continue to drive or to make a <coughs> more races in the in this year i don't know what happened in the future but i think it's if the vaccine uh, advance and uh, all the countries have the possibility to vaccinate it i think is we have more possibilities to do the races uh, around the world for all of us uh, not only in private life, even in racing life, it's a big problem with our COVID-19 situation. I'm, I'm very happy that the organizer of the Dubai International Baja was able to organize this race like the Dakar did. And of course, they have had to set up a complicated um, COVID protocol and to make sure that everything is safe here, um, like social distancing, wearing the mask, uh, PCR test you have to bring um, to, to, be able to, to, to be able to enter the BWAC and the race. Um, they are very careful here and, and checking that everybody is behaving in the right way. Um, it's, it's terrible for all of us and I'm glad that some race organizers are able to, to manage even under these circumstances the racing for us. It's sad that we could not go or cannot go to Portugal in April. I can understand fully that everything is more 
more tight and, and they haven't got the, the wide desert. So the people coming closer together, you will have maybe spectators, it's difficult to keep these spectators away. Here it's easy, you tell them not to come and they're not coming. And even if some people coming, the desert is big. No one is close to each other. That's not possible in Europe. And we cannot go to China this year as planned in a Sigwe rally because China is still very careful and has had problems too. Um, it is a strange situation and like I said, I'm glad that we can do some racing. I hope it will be more and more during the year, but I've got fully understanding um, for, for the countries or the, the clubs and the federations that cannot run races because it's too dangerous in this situation. Nothing we can do in the moment about it. So Lucas, you were doing your first race in a can -Am side by side. How did you like the sound of the car? The sound is too hard and <laughs> this is a big noise inside but uh, also the big advantage of this car in this type of stages is very uh, is a lot of agility in the middle of the dunes you can turn in the small places and also you have attraction all the time and it's uh, it's a fun experience in in this type of stages would you like to drive that car by your own no i think it's very rest i continue in the right side uh, for the next races. Why is that? Too, in, too intelligent for driving or too much thinking for driving? No, I don't have a level to drive with these cars, but uh, I think uh, my job is to stay on the right and not on the left side. You have got so many experience for sure you would be a good driver. But <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I think the only thing is that he's not a good driver, maybe we spoke with him to check the tire and then take the car and leave there. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Dirk. What is your experience in the two-way drive? Oh, it was my first experience here in the Peugeot. And actually, I'm very proud that I was able to drive your car or to co-drive your car. It was a nice experience. But I expected actually that the car would be more good in the, in the dunes. I was surprised that in the small dunes, small soft dunes, how difficult it is to drive the buggy in there. And like I said earlier, big respect for all the buggy drivers who are doing so well in the dunes. It's really not easy. Yeah, also the visibility of the car. What do you think about it? There I was positively surprised. It was better than I expected because when I look at you sitting in that car, it looks like you're very deep, far behind. But it wasn't so bad. Um, it's no big difference to the Toyota, for example. No, no, it's, it's, it's really a nice car. I, I, can, I can say so. Okay, you have now another type of car in your, yeah, now, in your back. What I'm missing is a mini buggy. I would like to drive the mini buggy. So maybe you invite me and then we can try it before they put it into the museum. I can invite you by the countryman, by the standard car, because the other car is not my car. Oh, no, not the countryman. <laughs>